the greater one of the peace of the Lord Jesus. The Lord has shown that while we were singing the song that I just we just sang, I return to you, my Father. The Lord is giving a blessing to a man who is here tonight with, in this place with us, because for a while he was away from the presence of the Lord. But as we sang the song, the Lord operated, and in the, on the heart of this brother, and removed from him all this this feeling of shame that he may have had for being away from the Lord. And tonight he would return to the presence of the Lord, and the Lord would give him a great blessing to his life. Amen. My beloved, there is a text in First Samuel. Hannah, she speaks about the birth of her son. And she said, For this son I prayed, and the Lord give it, gave me his petition that I had requested. And so the, the, I gave it to the Lord for all the days in which he lived, because it was a request from the Lord. And he praised the Lord there. Today we're going to do a presentation of a child, of a, a girl. And for this girl, the church was praying for. And, to the, and the Lord answered the church's petition. The church, on behalf of this family, of this home, of this house. And tonight, this girl is going to come here to the front in the same way in which Samuel was present, introduced to the church. And Samuel was introduced to the Lord. This girl is going to be introduced to the Lord so that she may serve the Lord all the days of her life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. We're going to call Guilherme Samuel to be here in the front. And tonight we're going to do the presentation of Sarah, Sarah Mello. Grandparents, grandparents are also here, Renata and Marcus, who also <laughs> prayed for them. Amen. We do not do baptism of children, because the word of the Lord tells us that uh, do not prevent children from coming to me, because to them is the kingdom of God. And if you don't receive the Lord in the same way as a child, you, you are not going to enter into the kingdom of God. So the child is saved because the child has not done, done anything bad. According to the project of God, they are really part of His kingdom. Amen. They are going to stand up. In the past, the Lord, the Savior Jesus Christ, Christ was also uh, presented in the temple. And the word of the Lord says that Jesus, he was presented on the eighth day and was fulfilled the period of purification that Lord Moses took him to Jerusalem to introduce him to the Lord and to give offering according to what was told in the law of the Lord. So it was, it is a, it's not a baptism, it's a presentation of a child, but it's registered on the word that even Jesus himself had been introduced before the Lord. And the Lord, later on, throughout his ministry, he did something interesting. He picked up a child on his arms, and he prayed with lay of hands upon the child, and it's written like this, and taking them on his arms, and praying with lay of hands, blessed them. And this is the action that, the, this act we're going to do here, an act of laying of hands for the introduction of this child, so that this child may be blessed all the days of this young life's life. This is Sarah. You can come a little closer here. Very good. Amen. Glory to God. The blessing that we're going to give here tonight is the blessings in Numbers chapter 6 from verse 22. 
and says the following. And he spoke to Moses saying, and he speak to our children saying, I will bless them. I will bless the children of Israel saying, the Lord may bless you and protect you. May the Lord may shine his face upon you and have mercy on you. May the Lord uh, raise his face towards you and protect you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we introduce Sarah before you, Lord. And once again, we please so that your good hands may be laying upon her life to protect her, to deliver her from any evil. And the blood of Je Jesus Christ may be hi hiding her from any damage or harm that may come against her life and for her love. That we may continue blessing the parents and our family members. Give your blessing, manifest your power and will in your mercy so that she may serve you all the days of her life. And we pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Very well. Oh, good it is. Amen. While we are standing, we're going to open the word of the Lord in Matthew. Matthew 22. Matthew 22 from the first verse. Matthew 22 from verse 1 until verse 10. And says, The following, my brethren, the word of the Lord. And Jesus, I believe that it's, uh, the microphone is too loud. And Jesus answered answer and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who ar arranged a uh, marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come again. He sent out other servants saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cow, cow are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, uh, treated them as, as pridefully and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious and he sent out his armies, destroying those murderers and burnt up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, going to the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So, uh, on to verse 10, the brethren may be seated.
Lord to God. Holy is, holy is your name, Lord. The king of heaven is like a king, a, similar to a certain king that celebrated the wedding of his son. In Revelation, it says the following, my brethren, blessed are those who are called to participate in the supper of the wedding of the Lamb. Jesus used a parable and he speaks of a king that celebrates the wedding of his son. A uh, while ago, I believe a year ago, there was a actual, a real marriage in England. I think Prince Harry. Oh, that young man, he watched it and this, the wife was Megan. Oh, okay. And so there was a real marriage, a royal marriage. And many watched the marriage. They saw the carts and the chariots, the organization, the place of the, the party, the place where the banquet took place, their, their dresses and the guests, probably honorable people, respected, people that had uh, certain intimacy and had a good relationship with the parents. It was considered as the marriage of the century. The BBC from London published uh, the magazines that everyone publicized about, the, about Harry and Meghan. And I'll ask the brethren here, who, like amongst us, would not have liked to receive an invitation to participate in a, a celebration like this? Oh, but I don't have dress, I cannot, I don't have appropriate clothing to go to a party like this. But on this wedding here, even the clothing, in this wedding, even the clothing is given by the king. So then the Lord uses a parable, he makes a comparison. And we made, uh, made a comparison very inferior, very small. We could even say very insignificant of what it, what represents the marriage between Harry and Meghan and the, where the marriage of the Son of God. The bride is the church and the groom is Jesus. Let us rejoice and be happy because as soon as the arrival of, of the marriage of the Lamb and the bride is already dressed up. And the word of the Lord, my brethren, speaks, says that a certain king who is God, the creator of heaven and earth, he prepared the marriage for his son, who is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he was getting ready for uh, preparing the marriage for of his son, the Bible says, my brethren, that he asked to call his guests, the nobles, the illustrious people, the ones who were part of his kingdom, the people that he had a uh, good regard for those people. They were considered honored by the king. And he sent an invitation. So then the king sends an invitation. And the people that received this invitation to participate on the wedding, to participate on the marriage of his son, a royal marriage, these people say that give uh, an excuse. They say that they don't want to participate. They chose not to participate. They were invited. They have been chosen, but they chose not to participate. And as a king, he could have given an order and say, look, I'm not going to invite anyone. I'm going to order. I'm going to 
say and the king and you, all of you will have to be on the wedding of my son. But the king didn't do this. You know why, my brethren? Because the king was noble. He didn't want anyone to participate on the feast of his son by force. But that they would be that it would be a choice from his guests. In the same way that the king honored those people by inviting those people, the people to should retribute the honor by being present on the wedding of the son of the king. But these people, they chose not to go and not to participate. There was an invitation, but there was also a rejection. And the word, my brethren, says that after that, after this rejection, the Lord asked to invite other people, other guests. The first that have been invited, they are, and they speak about the Jewish people. Jesus came for the one who were his, but the ones who were his didn't receive him. So that when there was a rejection from the Jewish people, the nobles, the lustres, the ones who were part of the lineage of the king, after that, after this rejection, the Lord sent other servants, and now those servants needed to say to the guests, in the first part, the guests were called. They were conclaimed to participate, to go. But uh, the second part, they were not called. But it was a proclamation. He was telling, uh, proclaim to the guests that there will be a feast on my kingdom. And this feast will be the celebration of the marriage, the celebration of the marriage of my son. Tell the guests. And so there was a proclamation, was a, actually an evangelization, was a, an announcement. And on this announcement, the guests, they became aware of what was proclaimed, was announced, what was said. It was revealed to them that there was going to be a feast, and this feast they could could participate on. The Bible said, my brethren, that the invitation was so that the servants could say the following. My wedding, my dinner is prepared, my calf has been killed, and everything is ready. So, in the first part, but there was an invitation, but they didn't know when. And there was a, a rejection. They didn't want to participate. On the, the second group of invitation, after the, re the rejection, the Bible says that the, the fattened calf are killed. The ox and the fattened ca calf are killed. So there was a sacrifice, was the shedding of blood, so that these other people would participate on this event of this wedding, of this royal marriage. So there was an effort from the part of God to include other people in this marriage, since the ones that had been invited first had rejected. So now the banquet was already prepared. The table was already set. There was a sacrifice already. It is speaking something that is related to the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The oxen and fattened calf, the one that was there to be the sacrifice, to be part of the supper of the Passover. And the Bible says, my brethren, that these people, so the dinner, dinner is prepared, everything is ready. 
my brother and sister, on the Feast of Salvation, everything is ready. The Lord has already provided all things. The sacrifice of the Lord Jesus has already been done. Everything is ready. You cannot enter with anything. The only thing that you and I need to do is to accept the invitation. It's not to reject the plan and the project of God because everything is ready. The Lord has already provided all things for you, for me, for each one of us. There is a place uh, at the table with the king. You have already been invited to the banquet of the king. There is already a place for you in the house of the king. You will be next to the king. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And this is, the, this is a great privilege. You and I, to participate, we have been called for this wedding, for this banquet. The Bible says, my brethren, that those people didn't pay attention to this announcement. My brother and sister, many have been called to the wedding of the Lamb and they don't care, they don't give the least importance. They don't pay attention. They didn't pay attention. And you know what, what they did? And they made light of the invitation and they said, they went away. I'm not going to participate. Everything is prepared. The table is ready. The sacrifice has already been done. But I'm going to go away. I'm going away. My brother and sister, on the best part of the feast, when the banquet was already prepared on the table, when the king saying, come upon me, on the moment of the call from the king, many are going away. And where they are going to? The Bible says, my brethren, that one, to his own farm, he left the wedding of the son of the king. He left the royal marriage. He left the wedding of the lamb and exchanged it for the field, for the form of his own personal and selfish interests. And many are doing this. The exchanging the wedding for their own farm. And the other one, another to his business. And as I always say, money is money. <laughs> the businesses of this life, the shores of this life, the money of this life has caused many to reject the invitation of the king. But the Bible also says, my brethren, that there were others that were even worse than the ones that did first. You know what the others did? The word says that these others and the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. And why those servants have been taken, they have been seized, humiliated, and why were they killed also? You know why? Because they were saying, they were proclaiming about the wedding of the son of the king. And there in Hebrews, it speaks about this. Very well, my brother, that's where it is. And they experienced scornful beating, prisons. They were stoned, uh, tortured, killed by the sword, and they dressed up in skin of goat and lamb. And they were afflicted and mistreated. But those men that proclaimed the wedding of the lamb, the wedding of the son of the king, 
those men were servants from the king. And the king didn't simply disregard uh, this action. When Israel rejected the Lord Jesus, you know what happened with Israel? The temple was destroyed and the seed was set on fire. When man rejects the Lord, the invitation for the wedding of the king, the son of the king, we see destruction and death. And that happened with the Jews and they are suffering to this day. And that's what's going to happen to those who have rejected the invitation for the wedding of the Lamb, for the wedding of the son of the king. The Bible says, my brethren, but when the king heard about it, he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burnt up their cities because they rejected, because they mistreated the ones who were proclaiming about the wedding of the son of the king. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy. There was worthiness to those men. They didn't have respect. They didn't have fear of the Lord and life of those men because the invitation was invitation from the king. And the word says, my brand, he says the following. Therefore, go into the highways. The Lord doesn't say about the way. He speaks about in plural. He doesn't speak about the entrance of the way. He speaks about the exit of the way. The path will lead us from one place to another, just a way. Many paths give us many options in many directions. The Bible says the following, my brethren. There are paths that to man seem good, but their end, the exit, their end are a path that will lead to death. I told these people that were going on this way towards death, my time was counted towards death. The people that was walking in darkness and a great light came upon the valley of shadow of death, shone. And so for these people, there is on the exit of this path, they are walking towards death. These people, was, well, they were also invited. It was a people that, in the beginning, was not part of the guest list, but because of the rejection of some, they have been included on the project of God, on the banquet of the Son of God. My brethren, we, we are Gentile. We didn't have participation on this kingdom. There was no place for us in eternity of God, on the banquet of God, or actually of the Son of God but was pleasing to God to send his servants, send his Holy Spirit, send men and women that suffered, that perished, that were killed and tortured, so that this invitation would come to each one of us, because they went to the exits of the road to find you, to find me, to find us, to make this invitation to us so that we would participate on the wedding of the Lamb, the, the wedding of the Son of the King. Go. That's what Jesus proclaimed. Go out, out to the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes will be saved. So it was an invitation for salvation. And this invitation to salvation is to this day is being proclaimed everywhere 
today because the desire of the Lord at this house will be filled. The desire of the Lord is that on the wedding of the Lamb we may be present. Then, therefore, go into the highways and as many as you find, invite to the wedding because the desire of the Lord is to save all. Because the Lord loved the world in such a way that sent His Son so that whoever believes in Him may not perish but have eternal life. And that's the desire of the Lord. For my life, for your life, for our lives. To whomever you find. And my brethren, uh, the Lord says, uh, the Bible uh, gives an example about the immutable love of God towards our lives. You know whom uh, He asked to invite? Only good people? No, if, if God wanted only to invite good people, would not be here. Because He said, invite the good and the bad. Invite everyone, good people and bad people. There is room for, for everyone in the kingdom of God. Both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. My brethren, God doesn't, doesn't care whether I'm good or bad. What God wants to know is that if I accepted the invitation, what God wants to know if you accepted the invitation on the exit of the highway God met with you my brother and sister and tonight we are here because we have a, a meeting that was scheduled with God and this and this meeting is being proclaimed that there is a place for you and I in this banquet you don't need to be good in order to serve God to be in the banquet of God because salvation is not by deeds it's by grace because by grace you're saved it's not from you it's a gift from God it's not from works so that anybody may boast about it my brethren the bad person when they, that person comes into the presence of God he's humbled and God removes any anguish and sin every good bad thing that was in his heart and his mind so that he may participate on the wedding. Because on the wedding, in order for us to enter, we need to be washed and purified and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. This, bl this blood has already been shed. And the price for your ticket, for your, for your visa, the the invitation has already been paid a high price for Jesus for all of us so that you participate on the wedding of the Lamb so that you participate on this wedding feast because the Bible says that in a twinkle of an eye we will be with the Lord in His eternity Amen
falou teu nome. Glória a Deus. Holy is your name. Hallelujah. My brethren, at this moment, the servants of God, the Holy Spirit, has gone everywhere to guide us to a new and live, living way, which is eternity with our God. The Lord has shown a man, this man, and the gift, this man fell inside a volcano. What does it mean? It's a man that in his fall, in his failure, in his mistake, he entered in, into a great difficulty and a big problem. And when a person enters into a volcano, this person will probably die, right? If you enter into a volcano. It's like Sadrak, Mezak, and Abednego. They were into a furnace that was raised its temperature seven times, but the Lord was with them. But when we enter into difficulty, we enter alone. When we are in obedience, the Lord comes with us. But in difficulty, we enter into, into problem alone. He, this man fell into the volcano. He committed a mistake. But he didn't die. Why did, didn't he die? Because it's a project of God for the life of this man. There is a care from the Lord. There is a call from God for this man to participate on the wedding of the Lamb. And tonight, a rope was thrown to rescue this man. The rope it speaks of what connects me with God. It's the love of God. It's Jesus that came to rescue, to take man out of death and guide man to his presence, to life. And this man was rescued and he came covered on ashes. And ashes is the result of being burnt in you, my brother. The Lord erased your sins through the blood of the Lamb and threw it on the sea of forgiveness, all your transgressions. So from this day forward, you are worthy to participate on the banquet of the King, on the house of the King, and to live in the presence of the King. Amen. We're going to stand up. A palavra de glorificação, Senhor. Aleluia. Exalt your name. Because uh, tonight the banquet salvation was given to you. Because you pointed out the path to salvation. And today we are thankful. Because we are going to eternity. We are going to live in heaven. We praise your name, Lord. Lord, we thank you and praise you that we're thankful for one day you found us on this path and this place where we're going to die and you guided us to, to your presence. You're giving us this opportunity to one day participate on the banquet with you in your eternity. We praise you because you provided all things, Lord. And in the, mo in the appropriate moment, you will be with you participating in the wedding of the Lamb in your eternity, Lord. Take us in peace, under your protection, we pray in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, of a good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of those Holy Spirit, be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brethren may be seated. You who are, are with us, you are welcome to this place. We want to make an invitation to you. You who are visiting us tonight with the church that's here. This coming Tuesday, 17th, we're gonna we're not gonna have a service here in this church. Our service will take place together with the church in Hollandale Beach. The brethren that do not know the address, just search on GPS, MCC Hollandale, and 
and also is here on the projector. It's even easier. So if if you need, you can take a picture here. Choose at eight o'clock. We're gonna have a special service there with a few brothers that are coming from the consecration of the manna in Portugal. Pastor Jadotti and the brethren are going to be here, and we are all invited to participate, especially you who came here to the house of the Lord. And this coming Sunday, we're going to have here a baptism. Our service is not going to be at 730. It's going to be, it's going to start at 6 p.m. At 6 o'clock, seven brethren are going to come down to the waters. They will be baptized in the name of Jesus. And you, um, brother and sister, the whole church is invited to participate. And after the baptism, we are going to have a service with a supper of the Lord. It's going to start at 6 o'clock. And after 8 and uh, 9, and the service will be over. So we're not going to schedule the service before 7.30. But during this period, we're going to do the baptism. And soon after, we're going to have the supper of the Lord. In this place where you are all invited as an invitation for the wedding of the lamb and also invitation for the supper with the lord and this coming saturday after six o'clock six p.m we're not going to have saturday the women's meeting because of this event if you need a prayer we're here at your disposal and we are not going to have meeting this youth meeting this saturday if you need an uh, a prayer, we are here at your disposal to pray for you to clarify about the, the message or the spiritual gift. After the assistance, we are going to have a meeting with the teachers.